In this video, I'm going to introduce syndromes involving diffuse dysfunction of the cerebral cortex. So diffuse cerebral cortical syndromes, cortex syndromes, which are very common. So in this, instead of a problem in, for instance, just one cerebral hemisphere, we have problems on both sides, but basically involving the cerebral cortex primarily. So let me just draw some orange around the outside of this figure to represent diffuse dysfunction of the cerebral cortex. And the most prominent thing we usually notice with folks that have this is that they're very confused. And of course, confusion isn't a terribly specific word. But we all kind of know what we're talking about when we say somebody's confused. And I, I like to think of confusion as being a diffuse problem of cognition, and that usually goes along with diffuse dysfunction of the cerebral cortex. Now, there are a few other names that get attached to this. One common name is encephalopathy. Encephalopathy, which is a very nonspecific term. The word roots just mean brain dysfunction, and which is true because this is actually brain dysfunction. That's hard to be a lot more specific than that. And sometimes these folks, or actually often, these folks will meet the criteria for a more specific diagnosis called delirium. Delirium. And there are criteria to reach a diagnosis of delirium that people often have, but they may not make all of the criteria, in which case this term encephalopathy is often used. So when I think about these syndromes, I go back to thinking about the functions of the nervous system in a big picture kind of way. And I mentioned this before, that I like to break the functions of the nervous system into what I think of as the lower functions of the nervous system, which I think of as including motor functions, including movement, sensory functions of all our senses, and, and what I think of as kind of automatic functions, automatic like reflexes and autonomic functions. And then the other functions of the nervous system, I like to think of as the higher functions of the nervous system. And I lump under there functions called cognition, functions called emotion, and consciousness. So cognition, emotion, and consciousness, consciousness. And one of the reasons I like to kind of divide up the functions of the nervous system in this way is because some of these syndromes, like these diffuse cerebral cortical syndromes, will often affect the higher functions of the nervous system, and in particular cognition, but also often emotion and consciousness, while sparing the lower functions. And in particular with cognition, there are a few things that very commonly are dysfunctional in all the different cognitive functions. Probably the one that's affected most often and or most severely is attention. People with diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction often are very inattentive. They have abnormal ability to focus and sustain attention. And they're very distractible. Another thing that's often affected is orientation. Orientation to person, place, time, and or situation. But there's all sorts of other cognitive functions that are often affected with diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction, including memory, language, reasoning, executive functions, and many others that can be affected. But abnormalities of these higher functions and these cognitive functions in particular are very common, whereas abnormalities of the lower functions are fairly uncommon with many kinds of syndromes that involve diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction. Now, the reason for that difference is not clear, but it might be because areas of the brain that handle some of these lower functions, like some of the primary motor and sensory cortices, for unclear reasons, might be more resistant to a lot of the things that affect the cerebral cortex and cause this diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction. And subcortical areas and brainstem areas that do a lot of the automatic functions also may be more resistant to these sorts of problems that affect the other areas. And the other areas of the cerebral cortex that are these association cortices doing the more complex processing of information and often dealing with multiple types of information 
these seem to be the most vulnerable to a lot of different problems that cause these syndromes of diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction. So why that is is not entirely clear, but we can see a lot of people where they have diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction and all their symptoms and signs relate to abnormalities of the higher functions and particularly cognitive functions, but the lower functions are usually spared or minimally affected, if at all. So there's a lot more to this topic, but I'll stop there just to introduce this concept of syndromes of diffuse cerebral cortical dysfunction.